connection. I'm Rolf Versluis. I'm one of the co-founders of Horizon. That's a cryptocurrency that is on the top 100 of the coin market cap. And we have a lot of active development. And I'm going to give you, or I'm going to provide a brief overview of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and why it's important. And then why uh, we started Horizon and what some of the different aspects of Horizon are as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So it uh, starts the presentation. And um, if anything, uh, uh, we'll, I'll, uh, so I've got two quick presentations, well, maybe about 20 minutes, and then we'll uh, have questions. So let me go ahead and share my overall screen here. Introduction to cryptocurrency. Uh, some of this is new for some people, and, uh, but more and more people are getting interested in it. Well, so cryptocurrency really is the future of money. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what money is and why I think uh, cryptocurrency is the future of money. And a lot of this starts with uh, Bitcoin. I've got some uh, URLs, some references in here. If you wanted to find out additional information, I encourage you to do that. Um, so currency is just used for exchanging, for payments. Um, it's really a medium of exchange. And we've, we've gotten the idea of currency and money kind of uh, confused into one these days, but there's two very different properties between currency and money. Money is everything that currency is, but it's also a store of value. So for thousands of years, traditionally gold has been money because gold maintains its value over time. Sure, it goes up and down, but it has a low inflation rate. If you see how much new gold is created in this graph compared to how much gold is in existence every year, you'll see it averages an inflation rate of about 2%. So having a low inflation rate allows for a store of value when you keep your, um, when you keep your funds in money. Now wealth, wealth is a, something completely different. Well, currency and money are used to transfer wealth from one place to another, but wealth is your skills, your abilities, what you own, your know-how, your time, your, your history of success with people, your ability to get things done. So I come from the United States and uh, that's where I'm now. And here, the US dollar, it's currency. It's not money. It's currency because over the last hundred years, what was worth $100 is now worth $3.48. You can buy, you can't buy as much with a dollar. Uh, in fact, you can buy 97% less with a dollar now than a hundred years ago. But it's created by the government. It's required by the government for a tax collection. It used to be backed by gold. It's no longer backed by gold. That changed um, during the course of the hundred years. And even as a currency, it's not very good. It's slow. It has fees, and when uh, the dollar is converted to other currencies around the world um, for money transfers or things like that, there's additional fees. It's expensive and hard to use. The Nigerian Naira is a currency. It's not money. Here's a graph of the inflation rate uh, every year for uh, the past 20 years. You can see it averages between five and 20%. So every year, if you hold paper or currency, it goes down in value. And so it's currency, it's not money. Most people, I would expect in your country, don't keep a large amount of actual currency. Um, they try to keep their wealth in other assets like gold or real estate or businesses um, or invest in themselves with education um, and doing other things like that. Now, Bitcoin is something different. I encourage you, if you don't know a lot about Bitcoin, to go to We Use Coins and find out more about it, to read the book called The Bitcoin Standard. Some of the graphs and examples I use in this presentation are from this book. Bitcoin is money. And over here on the right, I have a graph of how much new Bitcoin is created um, compared to, and so it's inflation rate. So we're right here in 2018, you can see the inflation rate of Bitcoin is about 5% uh, right now, but it's going to continue 
So by 2021, it's going to be at the same inflation rate as gold, and it's going to be less and less. That's why many people say that Bitcoin is real money, because in addition to being a currency that's easy to use, person to person or international, it's also something that doesn't inflate very much and is able to be a store of value. That's why it's money. Bitcoin didn't just appear out of thin air. It was developed over many years, taking many different uh, mathematical and data network and computer uh, concepts and abilities and uh, created into a working system. And Bitcoin has been around since 2009. And uh, I think it's been about 10 years that it's been around. So it has all the aspects of money. Now, cryptocurrency is pretty easy to use. I got an example of using Zen here, uh, our cryptocurrency. And I have a wallet on my mobile phone. And sometimes, well, a lot of times people ask me, how can I get cryptocurrency? Well, you, you can earn it. Everybody has skills and some abilities. And um, you can take your skills and ability and earn your local currency. And then you can convert it to Bitcoin. You can convert it to Horizon. You can buy it from someone. You, there's a lot of different ways to get it. Once you, can, once you get a cryptocurrency, then there's many different ways you can store it. Because there's not an intermediary, there's no bank or government that's responsible for cryptocurrency, you do have to be responsible for the storage of it yourself. And, uh, and there's many different ways to store it. Mobile device, uh, wallet applications, computers, uh, there's even SMS text wallets that you can use. Uh, or store it on an online wallet or on an exchange. Here in the bottom right is a picture of our new uh, desktop wallet that is going to be released here, I believe, next week. Uh, we've been working on this for about a year. It's easy to use, looks good, and it allows you to have the full uh, aspect and all the features uh, of Horizon. I was noticing in the news that uh, folks in Nigeria are definitely interested in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and that the politicians are starting to respond to that. So this was a news article that I just saw. Um, don't know uh, what different politicians are, how they're gonna do in the upcoming elections, but it's certainly part of the conversation. So that's good to see. Um, blockchain is one of the underlying technologies of Bitcoin and one of the advantages of recording things in a blockchain is that it can be publicly verified. So we had recently had an election here in the United States. I went and voted. And when I voted, I knew that I voted. But after that, I didn't really know anything else. I didn't know if my vote was counted. Uh, I didn't know if other people had used my name to vote more than once. I really didn't know much about my vote after I actually uh, clicked on the machine. If voting were done using a blockchain, I would be able to go verify that my vote was actually counted uh, if I had the information um, and that the vote that I made was actually correct, that it was recorded correctly. So there's many different uh, blockchain uses and Bitcoin uh, and as money is one of the biggest and one of the best. That's why it's growing fast. You can see here in the bottom right, both these graphs are from the book, the Bitcoin standard. Um, so as more people get interested in using Bitcoin through supply and demand, um, the price of it tends to go up. Uh, but there's many different ways uh, that cryptocurrencies are going to affect everybody going forward. Now, one of the problems with Bitcoin, um, or that I believe is a problem, is that all the transactions are public. So everybody gets a Bitcoin address or multiple Bitcoin addresses. And then when you send funds using Bitcoin, it's recorded on the public uh, blockchain and that can be viewed by anybody. You can go to a blockchain explorer and people can look at the different transactions. Now, people's names aren't attached to that, but um, if, well, if Bitcoin addresses are reused, or reused multiple times, it's possible over time for people to analyze the blockchain and tie those addresses to specific entities. So at Horizon, our belief is that it's important to be able to have the ability to have complete transaction privacy in some cases. Regular businesses that have competitors, um, 
that don't want to share who their customers are, that don't want to share their suppliers, uh, they don't want their employees to know how much the other employees are paid. Business requires privacy. And so there are a few different ways to do privacy in cryptocurrencies. One of the best is using zero knowledge proofs. It's a pretty advanced form of um, cryptography. And the basic idea of a zero knowledge proof is that um, is able to mathematically prove that something is true without exposing the underlying um, information. For example, uh, Sudoku, a puzzle. Uh, I could show you that I have the solution to a Sudoku puzzle. Uh, I could prove that I have the solution, but I wouldn't have to give you the solution. There's many different situations where zero knowledge proofs are useful. And one of them is for privacy and cryptocurrency. So that's my quick overview of uh, cryptocurrency. And I'm going to move on and talk a little bit um, about Horizon and why um, I think that Horizon is a good um, addition to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and some of the things that we're doing to make sure that it is going to not only stay around for a while, but be very useful for many different people. So Horizon, bringing privacy to life, that's our tagline. When we created it, uh, I was one of the founders uh, of, of Horizon about in, in early 2017. We looked at the other cryptocurrencies out there and got some uh, different ideas from them on ways that we can make a good and useful cryptocurrency uh, that has privacy and has the ability to um, be completely decentralized so that there's no control by any one entity and that we can continue to expand and grow in the future. So I have different cryptocurrencies down here uh, that we used uh, as inspiration and actually because these are open source projects uh, used some of their software. So we started out with Bitcoin as the model. So Horizon is a cryptocurrency that's similar to Bitcoin. We added the zero knowledge proofs from Zcash. Zcash is a, is a, is a good privacy project. From Dash, we got the idea of a treasury. So that's a portion of the new Horizon that are created go to a treasury, which our, is controlled by our nonprofit foundation um, and that we can then turn around and hire software developers and people to do work. It allows us to uh, sponsor meetups like this. Um, so we have funds that come in uh, that we can use for development and marketing. Not a large amount of funds, but uh, enough to get us going. And then DAO, that's a distributed autonomous organization. This is a system for voting. Uh, Dash does their voting in one way. Uh, we have a different way that we're implementing voting. So all the, going forward, when it's implemented at Horizon, we haven't put it in place yet, uh, the decisions about about development and who's going to be responsible for different things are going to be done through uh, secret ballot voting uh, by the owners of Zen. Scalability. So from uh, IOTA, we got the idea of two things, uh, is to switch from a blockchain to a DAG, a, a directed acyclic graph, instead of, um, so the things with blockchains, like in Bitcoin, there's a new block on average every 10 minutes. So transactions get recorded. Um, they, they sh for a Bitcoin transaction or a Horizon transaction, it gets sent right away and you'll see it in your wallet right away. It'll get recorded into your, uh, into the blockchain after about 10 minutes with Bitcoin, after about two and a half minutes uh, with Horizon. And uh, similar to a credit card transaction, or if, if you use those, so like if I did a visa transaction, it would go through in a few seconds, and then it would be fully recorded in about 30 days. So the Bitcoin tr and Horizon transactions are recorded much more quickly. But with a directed acyclic graph, uh, they would be recorded even more quickly than that. And then uh, we have also, are working on a privacy uh, side chain, which allows for distributed applications. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the future. So, okay, so I didn't just come out of nowhere. I've got a little bit of background that, that gave me some technical ability and, and business ability. Uh, I'm an engineer, electrical, uh, nuclear, data networking engineer. Uh, over on the right, that's me on the top of a submarine on the Pacific Ocean. 
So I was an officer in the Navy. Uh, here in the bottom right, this is one of the many videos that I did when we first launched Zen, explaining it to people. Uh, here in the bottom left, I'm a cryptocurrency miner. So here's uh, me in, in one of my mining facilities in, in front of some of the uh, cryptocurrency miners that we own. And I, I started a company uh, with my two co-founders and uh, grew that for um, about 12 years. And then we sold it. And that was a data networking and data network security company. So um, taking that uh, business experience and I, I co-founded uh, Horizon with Rob Viglione. And since then we've grown the organization and uh, have people in all different aspects uh, because for a project to grow and continue, it's important to have people from all different aspects uh, uh, of what um, a, a business would normally do. So we have developers, we have system administrators, uh, finance, attorney, uh, and then uh, business development folks that uh, work in different local uh, economies to let people know about Horizon and help them use it. We even have a 24 hour a day help desk. So if in using your Horizon cryptocurrency, you run into an issue and have a question, we have technical people that can help you. So that's part of the philosophy of making Horizon a very usable cryptocurrency. We also have partnerships in addition to the people that uh, work directly for the foundation. We have a couple of uh, important partnerships that help us on the more advanced uh, cryptography research. IOHK um, did, has done a, two different uh, research and modeling projects for us. One's on the, on the directed acyclic graph and the other is on the treasury and voting system. And then we have a um, development group out of Ukraine that implements some of the more advanced updates that we want to our system. We also work with in institutional investors um, and of course many different exchanges, uh, point of sale systems and, and merchants. Now, why does Horizon exist? I mean, Bitcoin is a, is a perfectly useful cryptocurrency. Um, why do we think that we need Horizon? Well, for the people that are part of the organization, and it's to me, it's important to be able to have liberty and freedom in everybody's life. If, to, if you have liberty and you have freedom, then you're able to do the things that you wanna do. And privacy helps provide that liberty and freedom in your life. So here's an example is the, um, the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights. So when that was created a few hundred years ago, uh, there was enumerated the specific rights that the people have that the government should not take away. And uh, in some of these, you know, protection from unreasonable searches and seizures and other things like that. Well, it's hard to be protected against people searching through all your texts and emails and web browsing and um, other things like that if you don't have privacy. So in the places where you spend your money on, that's a big indicator of what you do in your life. So private transactions uh, for us folks at Horizon is an important part of protecting people's privacy and enabling their liberty and their freedom. And I'll show you here, everybody actually wants privacy because it gives individuals the power to disclose the information that they want to share with other people. A big one is religious freedom. Uh, if you're going to make contributions uh, to your church or to your mosque or to whatever uh, religious organization that you're a part of, you don't necessarily want other people, credit card companies, banks, governments, uh, criminal organizations, whoever, um, or people that, that don't like that religion to know that you're making those contributions. Or if you have a health problem, uh, or if someone in your family um, is, is having health problems and needs to get medicine or treatments. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine, his wife has to have a, a very advanced medication and there's supposed to be privacy between his wife's doctor and her. And a week after they were given that medication, he was starting to get sales phone calls for people that wanted to sell him the medication at a lower price. Uh, so the privacy that's supposed to be in place in many cases aren't. So people need to claim that privacy for themselves. Um, here's a picture of CBD oil. CBD oil in, in America has for many years not been allowed to be created. It helps people with epilepsy. It helps people with all, uh, all sorts of different diseases. 
or issues. Guns. Uh, if you're going to buy a gun, you might not want people to know that you're getting a gun. And many people have different types of relationships in their life. These types of relationships, they might not want to be public. And I already talked about businesses. Businesses need privacy as well. And one of the big things where cryptocurrencies really come to the fore, and privacy is an important part of that, is on international remittances. I talked earlier about how it's very difficult to send traditional currency through uh, the international banking system. Here's a graph of uh, different remittances that are made from the United States uh, and Britain to other countries around the world. Um, I don't see a lot of remittances that, that are made to Africa. I'm not really sure why that is, but I know that for companies like Western Union that do these types of remittances, when someone sends funds with Western Union, there's fees, it takes time, and then people know all along the path that these remittances are getting sent from one person to another. So with cryptocurrencies, especially with a cryptocurrency that has privacy, you could send funds anywhere in the world quickly and easily um, with complete privacy. Now, you can send a Zen private payment today. It does take the more advanced version of our wallet. Here's an here's a older screenshot. Uh, this is not our new wallet that's coming out. Um, but there's, we have, at Zen, we have actually two different addresses. We have transparent addresses. That's the easy to use quick one. It's just like a Bitcoin address. So most of you have a transparent address with Zen. Um, and so that is not a private address. But Zen also has shielded addresses. Right now, it takes a full computer running the uh, full wallet application to do private ad or anonymous addresses um, with Horizon. And within six to 12 months, we'll have that new technology uh, so that you'll be able to do shielded and private transactions on a mobile phone app. Um, but you can do private transactions today. And um, you can even, so if there's, this is one of our online partners, um, uh, Nutaku, and if you wanted to use that online uh, uh, and, and pay online with that, you could do it fully privately or anonymously using Zen. The capability has been there for over a year. So part of our philosophy at Horizon is to keep the system up and running. So many different cryptocurrencies, like with Bitcoin, 100% of the new Bitcoin that's created goes to the miners. We, we, do, that, we do that a little differently. 10% goes to the treasury that goes to the foundation that we use for development and helping people to use Horizon. And then we pay 20% to people that run nodes. And nodes are a little slightly more technical part of a cryptocurrency. But the nodes are what your wallet connect to. So if you're using a wallet application and you want to send a, tra a Horizon transaction, that wallet application has to connect to a node. So we think it's important that we keep our nodes up and running so and have them all over the world so people's wallet can connect to them uh, quickly and reliably. And that's why we pay people to operate nodes. Um, in fact, we, I believe we have the largest node network of any cryptocurrency out there. This is from a few months ago where we pay people to run secure nodes and then we have super nodes which are a bit more capable um, and these are servers that are running in data centers usually um, and you can see that we have them all over the world so as of last month there was 22,000 completely reachable nodes and um, if you're using your wallet and you want to connect to a node you'll probably end up connecting to one of the ones uh, close by. Um, so the more we can get these nodes distributed in different countries around the world, the harder it's going to be for anybody that doesn't like Horizon to block access to those cryptocurrency nodes. And in part of the design and operation that we do, we try to make sure that we think about everybody, the developers, the users of the cryptocurrency, so the, the, and the merchants, um, the miners, uh, the investors, and um, the businesses that want to use Horizon. We've also accomplished a lot since we started and have plans to accomplish a lot more in the future. So um, I mentioned that we're going to be able to do the private and anonymous transactions on mobile devices within the next six, six to 12 months. That's the important one. We're also going to um, 
move control of the system uh, gradually over to the owners of the cryptocurrency by implementing a treasury system. So in order to do these more advanced decentralization applications, we have to create something called a side chain. So uh, with a cryptocurrency, there's a blockchain where we take all the transactions that happen every two and a half minutes and put them in a block and everybody who runs a node needs to store every one of those blocks. Well, for some of the uh, voting uh, that we're going to do and then the tracking of the nodes and paying of the nodes, we're gonna run that on the decentralized system, but as side chains. So I'm not gonna go too deeply into the side chains, but the, the first two applications that we're gonna be putting on the Horizon side chains are the node tracking and payment, as well as the governance and treasury. And then we're gonna enable software, a software development kit for third party application developers that want to be able to run their applications on a system that is decentralized, um, that is all over the world and has privacy capabilities, people will be able to run their applications on that system. So you'll see that here in the next year. So Horizon's really got privacy applications for everyday users. We wanna make it easy for people to use our cryptocurrency. Uh, this is the uh, picture of the new desktop wallet that's coming out. Soon after that, probably in a month or two, we're gonna have uh, Android and iPhone um, mobile wallet coming out that's easy to use and then that'll be upgraded to be able to have the uh, private transactions uh, at some point in the future. So um, how can I get some Zen? Uh, you know, convert your local currency to Zen. You can get some currency from working and, and I, talk, I guess I talked about this a little bit in the previous um, presentation, but exchange it for Bitcoin at an ATM or an exchange or from uh, local Bitcoins. And then if you use the Coinomi wallet app, you can convert Bitcoin to Horizon in the app. If you have a relationship with a, a cryptocurrency exchange, you can do the exchange there or you can do that person to person. And then you can uh, you know, pay people uh, and use it or store it. And um, if you can get merchants to accept Zen, then you can start creating a cryptocurrency ecosystem and you can start moving away from the NERA and you can start moving your local economy to cryptocurrency. So part of that is having a point of sale system. AnyPay and Paytomat uh, are good point of sale systems. In fact, Paytomat has a wallet. They have a point of sale system. Um, and if there's merchants that you know that are interested in being able to accept cryptocurrencies, uh, I recommend that you all look at, that you talk to them about these different types of uh, point of sale systems. So if you want to be involved more with Horizon, go to our website, uh, look at the different ways to access uh, and join with Horizon and find out more about it. We have an active Discord group. Uh, we have an active Telegram group. On our blog is lots of information. We, uh, two or three times a week, we provide new information about things that are going on. Certainly follow us on Twitter. Um, and if you want to get a little bit more involved, uh, discuss different proposals on the forum. Uh, you can be a cryptocurrency miner if you have uh, good low price electricity and the access to the right mining equipment. Uh, or if you are able to gain 42 Zen or, or 500 Zen, uh, you can operate a node and continue and help the system pay up, stay up and running and get paid to do that. So anyway, uh, that's the presentation that I have on Horizon. Thank you for listening to, um, to what I've got on, on, on this. And, and I encourage you to continue to learn more about cryptocurrencies, both Bitcoin and Horizon. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Rob. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm glad that, that, uh, that, uh, that this video uh, presentation works well. It looks like uh, we got a good connection here. Does anybody have any questions, or, or will I, do you have any uh, any questions that might have come up that you'd like me to address? Uh, I, I, Mr. Ruff, I think it, it's asking about mining. It's asking about mining, how he can invest his money into Horizon cryptocurrency. Um, well, uh, 
So Horizon is not fundamentally different in the way that the mining or the blockchain works from Bitcoin. So we, uh, all, all the, there's new crypto, there's new funds created every block um, and that's done through mining. So there's a competition between all the miners to solve the next block. So in every block, there's a few hundred transactions that are included in the block and whichever miner solves the math problem uh, to be able to get the next block gets rewarded with the new um, cryptocurrency, with the new uh, Zen. So Zen follows a uh, schedule that's very similar to Bitcoin that there's only going to be 21 million Zen created. And at this, and there's a halvening of Zen that's created uh, every four years. So right now in every new block, there's 12 and a half Zen that are created. So that means every month there's 216,000 new Zen that are created. And so I, I might have not done the big picture numbers uh, in the presentation. So if you're a miner, um, you connect your mining equipment to a mining pool and uh, you end up converting electricity into uh, new Zen. So uh, I have some, uh, I used to do mining for Horizon uh, using graphics cards, GPUs. Um, that's not as profitable because there are, are, are a couple of new, um, there's some manufacturers have developed uh, ASIC miners, so application specific miners for Zen that are much more efficient and profitable, uh, Bitmain and InnoSilicon. So if you're looking to possibly mine uh, cryptocurrency like Horizon, I'd recommend looking at getting an ASIC miner and then getting uh, electricity. My, the electricity that I have, uh, I'm fortunate here that it's about six cents in US dollars per kilowatt hour. Um, you need to have, have that. Um, so the new cryptocurrency is created every block um, and then that's recorded on the blockchain and it's distributed to the miners. And, and so one of the, and that distribution of new uh, cryptocurrency is recorded on a block explorer. So uh, Horizon has a good block explorer just like every other cryptocurrency does. So hopefully that, that helped answer your question. He's trying to inquire if he can purchase, if we can buy some coin into his wallet now that the coin is dropping down in price then when the price of the coin go up if you can be able to if you be able to sell the coin then and make profit oh yeah there's people that do that all the time so um the, one of the things about uh so fortunately or unfortunately um when we can use so horizon two weeks ago the us dollar price of horizon was about 15 dollars Right now, it's about eight dollars. So just like um, just like stocks, but right now cryptocurrencies have different have different prices that people are willing to pay for them, um, and we're traded on all sorts of different exchanges uh, like Binance and Huobi and Bittrex. Um, and so, if you're going to be uh, buying and selling Horizon and other cryptocurrencies in order to buy them at a low price and sell them at a higher price or, or do more advanced trading like uh, sell stops or limit orders or shorting cryptocurrencies or things like that, that's all possible. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to the price in the future. That's determined by the buyers and the sellers in the marketplace. But I can tell you that the price that Horizon is right now in the market compared to the US dollar is one of the lowest prices that it's been for the last year. Is it gonna be a lower price in the future? It might. Is it gonna be a higher price in the future? I think that Horizon's gonna be uh, at a much higher price in a few years from now. I don't know what's gonna happen in the next few months. So is it possible to buy and sell cryptocurrencies and buy them at a low price and sell them at a higher price and make money make money that way? Yeah, absolutely. There's people that do that all the time. It's difficult to do that on a regular basis and make money. It takes skill, just like any other activity in life takes skill. Uh, Mr. Rov, there is no more question. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time uh, that everybody provided, and I, and I hope this was helpful. Um, for information about cryptocurrencies in general and for Horizon in specific. And uh, thank you every, everybody. And uh, we'll definitely follow up 
if you've provided an, a, a Zen address uh, here over the next day, I plan on sending a little bit of Zen to everybody that's provided an address. You should see that show up in your wallet as uh, we go through and get that done. So thank you very much and have a great day. Yeah, thank you.